Hi, this is Marty from Blue Lightning TV. I'm going to show you how to create a powerful dispersion splatter effect from a photo. This is an update of a tutorial I did quite a while ago on an earlier version of Photoshop. You can choose to use a background to place behind your subject or use a white background. For this example, I'll use this concrete texture and then later I'll show you how to place your dispersed subject on white. If you'd like to use this texture, I provided its link in the video's description or project files. The first step is to make it into a smart object so we can modify it non-destructively and even replace it without having to redo the effects that we'll be adding to it. You know a layer is a smart object when you see this icon at the lower right corner of its thumbnail. Go to Filter, Blur, and Radial Blur. Make the amount 10 pixels, the Blur method is Zoom, and the quality is Best. Then click OK. Open an image of a subject you'd like to use for this project. I downloaded this one from Shutterstock.com. We want to remove the background from the subject, so we need to make a selection around the subject. There are many ways to make selections, and your choice should depend on the characteristics of your image. Since the background in this image is white, I'll use the Magic Wand tool. If you're using this tool as well, make sure the Add to Selection icon is active. This will add to the selection as we click on different areas of your image. I'll make the tolerance 20, but you may want to play with this amount depending on the size and resolution of your image. Make sure Contiguous is checked. Click outside your subject to make a selection around it. To add selections to any blank areas that may be inside your subject, just click on them as well. Invert the selection by pressing Ctrl or Command Shift I. Click the Refine Edge button or go to Select and Refine Edge. I did an in depth tutorial on Refine Edge, so if you'd like to watch it, I provided that link as well. Check Smart Radius and drag your tool over the outer edge of your subject's hair. Output it as a new layer and click OK. To place your subject onto your poster, press V to open your Move tool and drag it onto the tab of your poster. Without releasing your mouse or pen, drag it down onto the background and release. I held my Shift key when I dragged it down to keep it centered. To adjust its size, open your Transform tool by pressing Ctrl or Command T. Go to a corner, and when you see a diagonal double arrow, press and hold Alt or Option plus Shift as you drag it in or out. Then, click the check mark at the top. Since I already sized my subject earlier, I'll click the Cancel Transform icon. If your subject has a fringe surrounding it, we can get rid of it by going to Layer, Matting, and defringe. Make the width one pixel and click OK. Convert your subject into a smart object. Make a copy of it by pressing Ctrl or Command J. Name the top layer Original and the layer under it Liquify. Click the eyeball icon to hide the top layer. Go to Filter and Liquify. The only tool that we'll be using is the Forward Warp tool. If you want to make your tool bigger or smaller, just drag the size slider. Drag out the edges of areas in your subject. Then, click OK. Click the Layer Mask icon 
to make a layer mask next to the liquify layer. Invert the layer mask by pressing Ctrl or Command I. Making the layer mask black hides the layer next to it. Adding areas of white to the layer mask will reveal back areas of the layer. Click back the eyeball icon to make the original layer visible again. Make it active and click the layer mask icon to make a layer mask next to it. With the layer mask active, we're going to use black splatter brushes to hide areas of the subject. I provided a direct link to a splatter brush preset that you can download into your Photoshop brush preset folder. If you're not sure how to install brushes, I did an in-depth tutorial showing how to do this. I provided that link as well. After you install the splatter brush preset, open your brush tool and brush picker. Click the gear icon and click splatter. Click OK to replace the current brushes with the splatter brushes. Click the gear icon and click large thumbnail. To see all the thumbnails at once, just drag outside the brush panel. Click on a brush and press enter or return. Since these brushes are huge, you'll need to reduce their sizes. To do this, make sure your caps lock key is off and press the left bracket key on your keyboard until the brush is sized to your liking. Make sure black is your foreground color. Click on the same spot a few times until you can clearly see the background under your subject. Open back your brush picker and pick another splatter brush. Press enter or return and reduce the brush's size. Continue to stamp brushes over your image to reveal the background under it. Press the left or right bracket key to reduce or enlarge your brush. Click the black layer mask to make it active. Adding white onto the layer mask will reveal areas of the liquefied layer. Press X on your keyboard to make your foreground color white. Stamping a splatter brush onto and outside your image will reveal the liquify layer through the layer mask. Next, we'll increase the saturation and vibrancy of your subject's dispersion. Make a copy of the liquify layer by pressing Ctrl or Command J. Click the adjustment layer icon and click Vibrance. To restrict the adjustment layer to effect just the one layer below it, we need to clip it to that layer. To do this, either clip the Clipping Mask icon or press Ctrl-Alt-G on Windows or Command-Option-G on a Mac. Slide the vibrance and the saturation all the way to the right. To see it on a white background, Scroll to the bottom of the Layers panel, make the background active, and click the New Layer icon to make a new layer above it. Fill it with white, and since white is your background color, press Ctrl or Command plus Delete. This is Marty from Blue Lightning TV. Thanks for watching.